Today, I am continuing to teach on a subject that I've entitled, You've Already Got It. I've got a book on this. Study guides. I've got this in Spanish. And then we have CDs, DVDs. And I tell you, this is just one of the foundational things that God has spoken to me. This is the beginning of our third week of teaching. And even though what I'm going to be sharing this week will stand by itself, it would make so much more sense. It'd make a greater impact in your life if you got all of the material. So I encourage you to please go to our website or you can call and get these materials. But this is a deal changer when you understand that God has already done everything. I've got a picture of a dog on here chasing his tail because in a sense, this is what Christians have been doing. They've been asking God for something that they've already got, just like a dog chasing his tail. He's already got it. If he catches it, what's he going to do with it? Did you know that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? That's what Ephesians 1, 3 says. And then I took the uh, prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 14 through the end of that chapter, where he was praying. And he wasn't praying that God would give them something new, but rather that they would get a revelation of what they've already got. And as he spoke about that, he said that they would understand the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, the same power that was used when God raised Jesus from the dead. You can't get any more power than that. You've already got it. Everything that you're asking for, God has already given it to you. I also used as an example... Adam and Eve, when God created Adam and Eve, when they got hungry, he didn't say, oh, I didn't think of that. Let me create something for you to eat. No, he anticipated every need that they would ever had, have. And before they had the need, God had already created the supply. So when they got hungry, they didn't have to ask God and then God respond to them and provide something. God had provided before they ever had the need. They just reached out and partook of it and said, thank you. There is a direct parallel between that and our Christian life, that God has anticipated everything that you will ever need. Healing has already been done. 1 Peter 2, 24, by His stripes you were healed. You aren't waiting on God to heal you. God is waiting on you to believe that you have been healed and to get to where you believe what He says more than what the doctor says or what your body feels, and you start operating in faith. And faith reaches over and draws out of the spiritual realm what has already been provided and brings it into physical reality. So we've been talking about all of those things. Let me go over just two other things before I move on in this teaching because this is so foundational. I also taught that faith doesn't move God. Now, this is a common concept, and you hear it repeated a lot, that faith is what moves God. But the truth is God moved independent of us prior to us even existing. Everything that God supplied for us, He supplied in Jesus. For instance, that verse that I've already used, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, By His stripes you were healed. By His stripes means when Jesus was uh, crucified, He went through that mock trial and they beat Him and He bore stripes on His back. And those stripes that were given 2,000 years ago in Herod's judgment hall is when you got healed. If you need a healing today, God is not going to heal you today. He healed you 2,000 years ago through what Jesus did. Healing has already been accomplished. It's already provided. It is just there like, you know, Adam and Eve, that fruit, it was already there, but you have to reach out and take it. God didn't just feed them intravenously and make the nourishment come into their body. He provided the food, but they had to reach out. If it was a banana, they had to peel the banana. They had to eat it. There was something they had to do, but God made the provision before they even had the need. And this is the way that it is with healing, the way it is with prosperity, the way it is with joy and peace. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. God has already supplied those things. When you got born again, your born-again spirit has the abundance of joy and peace. And I know that there are some people thinking, well, I don't feel it. Well, that's a different issue. Feelings are not a perfect indication of reality. 
I tell you, I could get way off the subject and talk all that. I'm not going to do that. But let me just quickly say that feelings have been too exalted to a position of idolatry in most people's lives. It doesn't matter what the Word says. It doesn't matter what reality says. This is what I feel, and because I feel it, then that is real. You need to pull your thumb out of your mouth and grow up. That is super immature. Going by your feelings is just childish. Man, I said some things. I can hear television sets clicking off all over the world. I know that that upsets people, but if you will receive it, what I'm saying is going to help you. You just can't go by feeling. People say, but I don't feel this love, joy, and peace. That's because you aren't walking in the Spirit. You aren't renewing your mind by the Word of God. You aren't going by what the Word says. Instead, you're going by all of these external things. Anyway, I'm not going to teach on that, but regardless of what you feel, the Bible says you have all of these things. It's not something that you need to ask God, to, oh God, please, just let me feel your love. You need to go by what the Word says that God has already committed His love toward you in that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. He's already done it. It doesn't matter if you feel it or not. If you don't feel it, then your feelings are wrong. You need to go by what God's Word says and start basing your life on fact and on reality. And anyway, I'll deal with this more probably next week, but there is another reality beyond what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. There is a spiritual world out there and also on the inside of you. And so let me get back on topic here. Another thing, two statements that God has shown me that are just like foundational truths that my whole life is based upon. And it goes back to that statement that I was countering where it says that faith moves God. No, faith doesn't move God. God moves by grace, independent of you. He did it 2,000 years ago through Jesus before you and I existed, before you even had a need. God anticipated every sickness you'd ever have, every financial problem you'd ever have, every emotional, relational problem you'd ever have. Anything that you would ever need, God anticipated it, and He provided all of those things through the atonement of Jesus. He made all of it available. And when you got born again, God gave you everything you need now or ever will need in the future. Uh, That verse that I've already quoted in Ephesians chapter 1 says that you have the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living on the inside of you. He's praying that you would get a revelation of what you've already got. And so you don't need to say, oh God, just give me more power. Oh God, stretch forth your hand and touch me. See, all of those type of prayers are denying the fact that through Jesus, you're already blessed, that you already have the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And you are thinking that God has this power, but He is not prone to use it. You have to do something to get God to move. And so they come up with statements like, faith moves God. No, God's not stuck. God moved. He's already provided everything you will ever need before you ever need it. So you don't, faith doesn't move God. Here here are the two statements that have radically transformed my life. Faith is not something that you do to get God to respond. Now that's simple, but that is profound. Again, when people say that faith moves God, people are saying that faith is something you do and then God responds to your faith. I don't believe that's true. Faith is just your positive response to what God has already done. If God hasn't already done it, then your faith can't make Him do it. And I went into some explanation on this in our last week's program. I'm not going to go back through and use those examples, but you can't just, you know, claim somebody else's mate for you because you love them and want them because God didn't provide adultery and fornication for you in His atonement. So you can't use faith and say, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has given me this person and I receive it because Mark 11, 24 says, whatsoever things I desire when I pray, believe that I receive them and I shall have them. You can't do that because 
GOD IN HIS ATONEMENT THROUGH JESUS DID NOT PROVIDE ADULTERY AND MURDER AND LYING AND STEALING AND THESE KIND OF THINGS FOR YOU. SO YOU CAN'T USE SCRIPTURES THAT SAYS ALL THINGS ARE POSSIBLE TO HIM THAT BELIEVES, AND THEN YOU GO OUT AND START BELIEVING AND YOU MAKE GOD, YOU KNOW, HELP YOU ROB A BANK AND GET AWAY WITH A MILLION DOLLARS AND NOT BE CAUGHT. THAT DOESN'T WORK BECAUSE GOD DIDN'T PROVIDE THIEVERY FOR YOU IN THE ATONEMENT. FAITH IS JUST YOUR RESPONSE TO WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY PROVIDED THROUGH GRACE. AND HERE'S A SECOND STATEMENT. AND THESE TWO STATEMENTS, THE REASON I'M MAKING A BIG DEAL OUT OF THEM IS BECAUSE THIS IS JUST FOUNDATIONAL THAT YOU GET THIS ATTITUDE. THE SECOND THING IS THAT FAITH ONLY APPROPRIATES WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY PROVIDED BY GRACE. IF GRACE HASN'T PROVIDED IT, WELL, THEN FAITH CAN'T MAKE IT HAPPEN. FAITH DOESN'T MOVE GOD. FAITH DOESN'T MAKE GOD DO SOMETHING. FAITH IS NOT SOMETHING WE DO TO GET GOD TO RESPOND TO US. FAITH IS OUR POSITIVE RESPONSE TO GOD, AND IT'S JUST REACHING OUT AND PARTAKING OF WHAT GOD HAS ALREADY PROVIDED. I GO BACK TO THAT EXAMPLE OF ADAM AND EVE THAT GOD HAD ANTICIPATED THAT THEY WOULD NEED FOOD. HE PROVIDED ALL OF THE FOOD THAT THEY WOULD EVER NEED, BUT IT DIDN'T AUTOMATICALLY COME INTO THEIR MOUTH AND GIVE NOURISHMENT TO THEM. THEY HAD TO REACH OUT AND JUST TAKE WHAT GOD HAD ALREADY PROVIDED. BUT THEY DIDN'T HAVE TO GO TO GOD AND SAY, OH, GOD, I'M HUNGRY. PLEASE FEED ME. GOD HAD PROVIDED IT, BUT THEY HAD TO REACH OUT AND TAKE IT. AND IF THEY WOULD HAVE JUST BEEN ASKING GOD AND WAITING ON GOD TO PEEL THE BANANA FOR THEM AND THEN OPEN THEIR MOUTH AND PUT IT IN AND CHEW FOR THEM AND STUFF, THEY WOULD HAVE DIED. NO, THEY HAD SOMETHING TO DO, BUT THEIR ACTIONS DIDN'T MAKE GOD MOVE. GOD HAD ALREADY MOVED. GOD HAD ALREADY PROVIDED EVERYTHING BEFORE THEIR NEED EXISTED AND THEIR FAITH WAS JUST A RESPONSE TO WHAT GOD HAD ALREADY DONE. IT JUST REACHED OUT AND APPROPRIATED WHAT GOD HAD ALREADY PROVIDED. MAN, THOSE ARE HUGE STATEMENTS. YOU KNOW, I'M NOT THE SHARPEST KNIFE IN THE DRAWER, AND MAYBE OTHER PEOPLE GET THINGS QUICKER THAN I DO, BUT IT TOOK ME ABOUT 20 YEARS TO GET TO WHERE I COULD SAY THOSE THINGS. BECAUSE I WAS RAISED UNDER THIS CONCEPT THAT FAITH IS SOMETHING I'VE GOT TO DO, AND THEN GOD, DEPENDING ON HOW WELL I DO IT, WILL RESPOND TO ME. AND IF I DO IT PERFECTLY, HE'LL GIVE ME EVERYTHING I NEED. IF I FAIL, IF I'M NOT THE PERSON I'M SUPPOSED TO BE, IF I, YOU KNOW, FAIL IN ANY WAY, WELL, THEN GOD IS IN CONSTANT RESPONSE TO ME. AND BOY, THAT PUTS A BURDEN UPON YOU THAT IT'S HARD TO BEAR. YOU JUST AREN'T GOING TO SUCCEED. YOU AREN'T GOING TO GET VERY FAR IF YOU THINK YOU'VE GOT TO DO EVERYTHING PERFECTLY BECAUSE WE FAIL. SOMETIMES WE FAIL DELIBERATELY. WE JUST GO OUT AND REBEL AT GOD. OTHER TIMES WE FAIL JUST BECAUSE WE ARE HUMAN AND WE DON'T DO THINGS RIGHT. WE DON'T STUDY AS MUCH AS WE SHOULD. WE DON'T LOVE AS MUCH AS WE SHOULD, AND ON AND ON IT GOES. BUT I'M SAYING WE ARE IN A CONSTANT STATE OF FALLING SHORT. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 3, VERSE 23, THAT ALL HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. AND THAT'S NOT ONLY PRIOR TO BEING BORN AGAIN. EVEN AFTER YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, YOU AREN'T GOING TO DO EVERYTHING PERFECTLY. AND IF YOU THINK THAT YOU'VE GOT TO DO ALL OF THESE THINGS AND JUST LIVE PERFECTLY AND and BELIEVE GOD AND DO THAT, YOU ARE PUTTING THE RESPONSIBILITY UPON YOU AND YOU AREN'T CAPABLE OF HANDLING IT. YOU ARE GOING TO FAIL. AND IF YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD IS RESPONDING TO YOU, THEN YOUR OWN HEART IS GOING TO CONSTANTLY CONDEMN YOU, AND YOU WON'T DOUBT THAT GOD CAN MOVE. YOU WILL JUST DOUBT THAT HE WILL DO IT THROUGH YOU OR FOR YOU BECAUSE YOU KNOW IN YOUR OWN HEART THAT YOU AREN'T LIVING AND DOING EVERYTHING AS MUCH AS YOU POSSIBLY COULD, AND YOUR OWN HEART WILL CONDEMN YOU AND YOU'LL LOSE YOUR CONFIDENCE, AND SO you, you uh, YOU WON'T SEE THE RESULTS THAT YOU DESIRE. BUT SEE, WHEN YOU BEGIN TO UNDERSTAND THAT FAITH IS NOT SOMETHING I DO TO GET GOD TO RESPOND TO ME, BUT GOD HAS ALREADY ANTICIPATED EVERYTHING, AND BY GRACE, HE HAS ALREADY PROVIDED EVERYTHING THAT I NEED, AND FAITH IS JUST ME RESPONDING IN A POSITIVE WAY. IT PUTS THE BURDEN UPON JESUS. WHEN I COME BEFORE GOD AND WHEN I NEED A HEALING IN MY BODY, I DON'T SAY, OH, GOD, I'M GOING TO DO THIS AND THIS AND THIS, AND I'M GOING TO DO THIS, AND I HOPE IT'S ENOUGH. GOD, WILL YOU HEAL ME? WILL YOU RESPOND TO ME? THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW. YOU MAY HAVE NOT PHRASED IT THAT EXACT WAY, BUT THAT IS PERFECTLY DESCRIPTIVE. 
of the way you're doing. You are, you're praying, you're hoping it's enough, and you're just hoping that God will respond to you and give you what you need. Did you know that that is not biblical faith? That's religious. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying that that won't work. What you've got to do is move beyond that to where, Father, thank you that you love me so much that you have already provided healing. First Peter 2, 24, by your stripes, I was healed. The stripes were given in Herod's judgment hall before I was ever sick. You've already provided it. Thank you that it's a done deal. And now I just reach out and receive what you've already done. It is so much easier to just receive from God than it is to try and twist God's arm and make him do something. If you stop and thought about it, that's illogical to think that we as mortal human beings could make God do something. No, God is God. And one of the definitions of God is he's the top of the food chain. Nobody tells God what to do. Nobody makes God do anything. God has done what he wanted to do. And because we serve a good God, his will is for us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Third John chapter one, verse two. And so that's God's will and he's already provided it. It's done. You aren't, you don't have to go and say, oh God, please heal me. He wants you healed more than you want to be healed. He wants you to prosper more than you want to prosper. He wants you to have joy and peace more than you want to have it. And God has already provided all of these things for you. So instead of starting in unbelief and saying, God, you have this power, but you, you haven't done anything, would you please touch me? See, that's unbelief. If you would start, Father, you've already done it. By your stripes I was healed, that you've already given me power to get wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You've already commended your love towards me. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. That you have already given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And if you were to start and say, Father, thank you that you've already done it. You want this more than I do. And so I just receive. I think on last Friday's broadcast, I was actually using Hebrews chapter four, where it talks about that you have to rest in what God has already done. And then it says labor to enter into that rest. This isn't talking about laying down and doing nothing, but it's talking about you quit thinking that you have to motivate God. You have to get God on your side. You have to do something to get him to respond to you. That's work. And instead of that, the opposite is that we should say, Father, thank you that it's not based on what I do. It's based on what Jesus has done. And I just rest in that. I rest in the fact that you've already provided it. And now I just reach out and receive. Faith just appropriates what God has already provided. I tell you, these are radical, radical things. And they're things that the average Christian does not understand. I started to say they don't believe, but the reason they don't believe it is because they've never heard it. They've not understood this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Our faith is proportional to the knowledge that we have. And if you think that God is sitting in heaven with his arms folded saying, nope, until you pray more, until you read the Bible more, until you go to church, until you start paying your tithes, until you do this and this and this, I'm not going to move until you do this. If you think that God is responding to you, well, then again, you are the weak link in the chain. And if you've got that kind of uh, pressure, that kind of uh, weight put upon you, I can guarantee you, you're going to fail. Your own conscience is going to condemn you and you won't receive. Not because you don't believe God could do it. You just don't believe he'll do it for you because you think everything is, is according to what you do. It's not. It's not what you do for God. It's what God did for you. And all you've got to do is just believe and receive or doubt and do without. It's really that simple. And I know that there's a lot of people who think, well, no, it's got to be more important. And I mean, you've got to do all of these things. We've got to be studying the Word. We've got to pray. If you are studying the Word, praying, going to church, paying your tithes and doing these things with the mindset that, God, I've done this, now you do that. That is the opposite of faith. That's works. That's trying to earn the favor of God. And the only sin that will stop the power of God in your life is the sin of self-righteousness. 
where you are trusting in your goodness and in what you have done. That will stop the power of God from flowing. God is not going to give you what you deserve. Praise God for that. If He gave us what we deserved, we'd all go to hell. God in His mercy has set up His system so that it operates totally on what Jesus has done. And the only thing necessary for you is just to believe and receive. And again, if what you're calling faith is, I'm doing this and this, and now God is obligated to do that in return. I've earned it. That's not faith. True Bible faith is just resting in what Jesus has done. It's saying, Father, I know that I haven't done everything right, but praise God for Jesus. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus instead of my own name, instead of the name of somebody else. I'm going to say, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive my healing. What that means is that because of what Jesus did, not because of what I did, but because of Jesus, I receive my healing. I expect to receive my blessing financially. I expect to have joy and peace because of what Jesus has done. And you know what? You have to labor to rest. The reason we study the Word isn't because God loves you more if you study the Bible. He doesn't love you more if you study the Bible. He doesn't love you less if you don't study the Bible. But you will love God more if you study the Word. You will love God less if you don't study the Word because you won't be renewing your mind. The Word of God makes this, this revelation, these things. The things that I'm sharing with you, I learned it through studying the Word of God. I saw this example of how God provided for Adam and Eve before they had the need. And then I was able to apply that directly towards myself. See, when you study the Word, it's not that studying the Word makes God move. It changes your heart and helps you to rest. And there is labor involved in that. It takes effort to turn off the television, to turn off the internet or whatever it is that occupies your time and to just spend your time in the Word asking God to reveal things to you and to show you things. It takes effort. You have to labor to enter into this kind of rest. And that's what this whole teaching that I'm doing is. Today, primarily, was just a summary of the previous two weeks. I am going to continue and expand on this, but I've got this teaching in this book entitled, You've Already Got It. I've played some testimonies the last couple of weeks of people who took this teaching right here and were miraculously healed. And I mean people that were in desperate situation. One of the men, Mike Hesh, had a huge tumor on his chest. And uh, I think it was for years he dealt with that. He got hold of this teaching and within a very short period of time was just totally healed and others. And so anyway, we have this not only in uh, book form, but I have uh, CDs on this. And then we have uh, DVDs that were taken from my television program. I also have Spanish uh, teaching on this. And we also have a study guide, which is a, the study guide is just the same material that is printed in a format that helps you to teach other people. And I encourage you to please get it. This will change your life.